Hey, Clemens, how's it going? It's going well. Hello, Doc. Yeah, that's good. I had looked in advance at the at the agenda. Very small. Yes, very small. I, and then I also I also thought, well, I'm very glad that Doug is doing this. <laughs> okay, what's the connection there? I'm not quite sure. I see it. No, I, I just looked at I just looked at the document. I'm like, oh, it's everything is is there already. Doug is. Uh, I'm thankful that Doug is doing this because uh, th this group would not be what it is if you weren't there. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure I agree, but thank you. <laughs> well, that is that is the truth. Uh, this is actually one of the highlights of my day, or, or, or my week, I should say. I, the only problem I have with this group is the meeting being on Thursday means that you know it's near the end of the week. And so by the time, you know, Thursday shot by the time this is over, because I got other things going on. And then Friday is either, you know, you're doing your normal work <clears throat> or you're kind of slowing down a little because it's almost the weekend kind of stuff. Yeah. And I keep thinking, okay, you know, I don't necessarily have to, to go back to some of my action items from, from the serverless working group. I could save it either for the weekend or early next week. But then the next thing I know, the weekend's gone. And then I'm, I'm looking at Monday and it's like, oh my gosh, I want to get this stuff done. I only have till Tuesday night to get it done because of the deadline for people to be able to review it. And the next thing I know, it's like after Tuesday and it's like, oh crap, I missed the deadline. So I'll just wait till later. And then it's like this perpetual thing of never having the time to actually work on the stuff I wanted to work on. There are, there are people in other, in other groups like this, which are definitely far less well behaved <laughs> than you are. Uh, I have, I have, uh, people who get chased around for this same same work item for like half a year already. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have so many high hopes for things I want to do on the weekend, and I end up just like vegging out or doing other things. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Tommy, are you there? Oh no, he has no microphone. Vlad. Hey, Dad. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Oh. Yo, Randy. Are you there? Hey, good morning. Hey, is this your first time in? I can't remember. It is, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm with RxM and we try to just sort of keep keep up with what's happening. RxM. You guys have been here before, right? With some other other people, yeah, though, usually, right? Usually Christian attends, but he couldn't today. Okay, I thought I'd recognize the name. Okay, cool. Thank you. And welcome, by the way. Thank you. Yep. Uh, uh, hopefully Scott will join soon because he has an interesting little demo to show us, which is kind of neat. Do, do, do. Oh, wow. It's almost the top of the hour where five people, what's going on? Uh -huh. um, by the way, for uh, uh, while we're waiting, mm -hmm. uh, I, th I, think, I think in the, in the um, schema registry spec, there will be the first use of cloud events for cloud events. Cool. Because um, I've been thinking about how to do um, replication, uh -huh. and so because we'll have to go and share the schemas, obviously. And I think the way, the best way to do this is to raise cloud events. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Cool. So that's kind of how this is all going to tie together: is by uh, by raising events whenever the, there are state changes, and then um, wh whoever subscribed can go in and pull this the state changes or the, the respective schema that has changed. Yep, that makes sense. I mean, that's what we're thinking about doing with uh, uh, the discovery endpoints as well, yeah. right? Because I know people want to subscribe to see changes. That's right. So that's that's how, how we generally should go to this. Yep, should be good. Okay. Eat your own dog food. Yeah. Hey, Mark. And Ginger, are you there? Hi, Doug. Hello, Manuel. Hi. Hello, and Slinky. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. 
So for folks on the West Coast, how are the fires looking? I haven't actually checked the news in a couple of days. Are they dying down? Is the smoke clearing? Does anybody know? Mark, I think you. You, 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 can, you can see a picture of this fog and smoke outside. That is ugly. Yeah, there's actually uh, a good island view out there, but not today, or not for the past week. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Blue first, sky. first day it got into moderate in Southern California. It's been worse the last several days. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, hello, Klaus. Hello. Do, 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 do. And Mr. Scott. Uh, Brian, are you there? Hello, Doug. Hello. And Mr. Baldwin. Hello. Hello. Ryan, hello. Hello. All right, just another 30 seconds or so, we'll get started. Rondu, I'm not going to say your name properly, so I won't try. Rondu, are you there? Yes, I'm here. It's okay, Rondu. Mm -hmm. And uh, which company are you with, if you want to be associated with a company? Yes, I'm uh, working for uh, SAP, but, but uh, yes, an open source. Okay, cool. Well, welcome. We have a very short agenda today, but on the positive side, Scott has a cool demo to show. Oh, actually, I can kill this AI, right? Because you put, put, put the forward a proposal already, right, Slinky? Yeah, I do the PR. Cool. All right. Jim, welcome. Hey. All right, why don't I go ahead and get started? It's three after. Um, what am I? Oh, my mind just totally stopped there for a sec. Okay, AIs. Uh, okay, community time. Anything from the community people want to bring up? That's not on the agenda. All right, we do have an SDK call right after this one this week. Um, I don't think there's anything on the agenda as of right now. So if you have anything, please go ahead and add it before the end of the call. Otherwise, it'll be a very short call. Uh, interop discovery. I'm not sure if there's anything worth mentioning from last week because I think actually a lot of people had to drop off for other phone calls. Scott or anybody else who was on that, can you guys think of anything worth mentioning? Okay, not hearing anything. Um, moving forward, I don't see TM or on the call to give an update on workflow. I do believe they've they voted on a new logo. Um, unfortunately, I don't have it handy to show you guys, but they are their work. They have a new logo now, and I'll. I'll try to find that and place it into the web, into the uh, Slack channel, if you, guys, if you guys are interested. All right, before we get into the core part of the agenda, are there any other topics people wanted to bring up that I forgot to mention? Okay, in that case, Scott, what I'd like to do is stop sharing so that you can show your demo. Woo, okay. Yes. Woo. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me see here, bam. Okay, you can stare at my uh, sweet, sweet prompts. <laughs> so I have a little Go program that's implementing the Discovery API as it sits in the repo right now. Uh, I didn't have a chance to implement Epoch yet, but I kind of want to. I want to show what uh, I think Discovery aggregation and propagation looks like. So um, I'm going to set up a scenario here. So. I'm going to talk about this as this is the left box, middle box, and right box. The left box is going to be uh, this. So this is all local host. There's no Kubernetes or anything. It's just running locally. Uh, this thing is going to run on port 8080, but um, and, and ignore this downstream thing. I have oh, maybe I can show you the kind of what I'm seeding this stuff with. I have some config. I think this one's going to be. Uh, X, Y, Z. It's just some static pieces of um, discovery endpoint. I, I actually think there might be a bug where I'm dropping types, but I'll fix that later. It's not important for this uh, demo. 
Okay, so let's start the server. It's, it's not really that interesting. It's just the discovery server. So we can uh, curl localhost at 8080 uh, and ask for its services. And we get a bunch of stuff. That's cool. We can pass it through JQ and kind of get like a, the preview of it. And like I said, it's dropping the events for some reason. I'll go back and fix that. But that's not that important. What we can do is uh, ask, I mean, I'm using JQ to just strip out everything except for the service name. So we can see what services this particular discovery endpoint is aware of. It's getting some errors because of uh, future demo, ignore that. So we'll set up a the middle box. This one's gonna run on 8181 and its downstream is going to be 82. Did I do this backwards? No, I think we're fine. Okay, so we'll run this one and we'll run its, right, okay. So the left box's downstream is 8181, which is the one we just started up. It's getting, uh, can't talk because the, the next server hasn't started up, but here you can see um, service C outdated. I'm kind of, I'm trying to say that this has a copy of service C, but it's uh, out of date in terms of like what the most recent C, what C looks like. And you can see that that propagated over to the first server. So now it knows about X, Y, and Z, but also C and D, but C is outdated. So we'll start up the final server here. We'll do the simple version with no downstream. So this is gonna start up the server that hosts A, B, and C on port 8282. So we'll run that. We'll watch its services. And now we can kind of see the, the A, B, and C propagates down the chain all the way to the left side, which that's neat. That's neat. Where it gets fun is you can make a ring if, if you so, like you can imagine like uh, in a very complex system, you might accidentally make a ring uh, unintentionally. So we'll start that. So the left hands downstream service, oh, sorry, the right hands downstream service is the left hand server. So now after a couple seconds, this thing is gonna pick up all of the X, Y, Z. It also picked up D. So, so now everything knows about everything else, which is neat, uh, which brings me to why we need Epoch. So I'm gonna start based on timing. So this, the middle server here has, has reintroduced service C as an outdated thing, but it's gonna continue to propagate and now it starts walking the ring, which is kind of entertaining to watch. <laughs> and, and the reason they can't understand how to reconcile the outdated C versus the, this updated C is because it has no way to understand which one is the most relevant one in this ring. So it, like, it'll never actually fix itself. It'll just cycle forever. But uh, that's my demo. <laughs> Very cool, but it explains why we're going to talk about the next PR on the list. Any questions Ooh. or comments for Scott? Thank you, Scott. I love it. That was beautiful. <laughs> I'll paste a link to the demo so you can run it and play with it if you want. Oh, crap. Hold on. I'm sharing the wrong thing. Uh, let's try this again. There we go. That's the right one. All right. No questions or comments for Scott? Okay. Again, thank you, Scott. I liked it. All right. Um, so tell you what, since he just talked about the Epoch thing, let's talk about that one first. So unfortunately, both of my PRs were updated. I think technically too late to do any kind of vote today, but even so, <clears throat> I still think people need time to review it. So on this one, this is the Epoch one, um, I basically took what we talked about last week and said, okay, we're gonna go with Epoch, which is just a number, um, it's an integer. Uh, it has no semantic meaning. People can technically put anything they want in there, whether it's just a counter or it's an actual Unix timestamp kind of thing. 
Um, that's up to the implementation choice. The only requirement is that it must always increase as it goes forward, as the service entry is actually updated. And that's basically it in terms of what I made here in terms of changes. Are there any questions on that? I'll give you guys a second to actually read what I wrote there. Is that consistent with what I think we agreed last week? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, unless there are other comments or questions, I'll leave it for you guys to review it for wordsmithing type stuff. But if you guys think in general it's heading in the right direction, just need to worry about wordsmithing, we can do that offline. So any questions, high level questions, comments? All right, cool. Thank y'all. Uh, REST APIs, again, too soon to vote or anything, but so this one, let's see if I can remember all the changes I made. So I think the biggest change that I made was to split out the APIs into two sections. Um, let's ignore that for a minute. I split it into discover APIs, which has basically just the gets. And it's a get of services with a get of services with a name. Okay, I think that's what we had in there before. So I didn't, I didn't really change a whole lot in there, other than I added a little more clarity around what the response codes could possibly be. Uh, mentioned you can use pagination in case the list of services is too long. Um, again, just return code type stuff. Hopefully, nothing in there is too shocking. But then the big change is the management API section. Here we talk about the put, the post, and the delete. And I decided to try to make a generic asynchronous message processing section because I found that when I tried to incorporate the logic of how to do async into put, post, and delete, it became kind of repetitive and made those sections look more complicated than they really were. So I, if you guys don't like this, I can, I can reorganize it, but I thought it might flow better to say, you know what, we're gonna put asynchronous processing in a complete se separate section on its own, and it applies to all the other um, management APIs um, in a universal fashion. Um, however, on the post side of things, I make it so that you can <clears throat> you obviously add a new service entry by just doing a post. This one, is, it's expected that there is no ID associated with it, so one will be assigned by the endpoint, by the discovery endpoint. However, if you're doing a put, uh, in cases, for example, you're doing an import or you just want to update an existing one, obviously the ID is already in there and therefore it must be inside the uh, service entry as well. Other than that, it's fairly straightforward. I do talk about how the ID needs to make sure it gets updated uh, during, the up, during the put, because it is an update. However, um, there was one gotcha I wanted to point out. Let's make sure you guys are aware of this. Um, okay, so down in here. Um, when you do an import, um, if, you, if you're trying to do an import, but that ID is already being used by the discovery service, I couldn't think of any obvious way for us to know from this discovery endpoint side, whether we're doing an import versus an update. Um, so I decided to add logic in here that says, well, if as a client, if you're doing an, an import and the thing already exists, you have to first delete it. Because the problem is I don't know whether to update the epoch or not, right? Because on, on an update, I should, it should get updated. On an import, it should not. So it got a little funky there. I'm not sure that's actually the right answer. I think it might be a too big of a burden for somebody to do a delete first or to check first if they need to do a delete first, because that's three requests, right? Do a get, do a delete, then do a put. So maybe we need to add a, a query parameter or something that says import as opposed to a generic update. I don't know. I was hoping maybe somebody else would have a more brilliant idea or any idea whatsoever, because I'm not happy with what I came up with, but it was late last night. Anyway. Um, that's about it. I do allow for deletes to be asynchronous as well. Um, but anyway, let me, let me go ahead and pause there. You guys can read it on your own. Hopefully it's not too earth shattering. Oh, I should say for the asynchronous stuff, I thank you Klaus for the link to how OData does it. I didn't exactly take what they did, but I used some of the similar thoughts they had in there. Um, and Clemens, you had a comment last week about trying to do 301 redirects and all this other stuff. And I, I, 
I gotta be honest with you, I couldn't bring myself to do it. It just, it just felt too darn tricky. And yeah. the idea of, the idea of sending the payload every single time, um, just, just bug me. I, I could be arm twisted in doing it if you guys really want. I just, I just couldn't bring myself to do it without more arm twisting. So anyway, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you can if you want. It's okay. Jem, uh, your hands up. And just a, and maybe it's not directly related to this. When you do a delete, is that a hard delete or a soft delete? I mean, it, it is all notion of history vaporized at that point. I actually did not talk about that yet. I was kind of assuming it's a hard delete, but. Uh, if someone wants to offer something different, uh, I, 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 never, I, I, honest, I didn't think about it. I will think about some implementation detail. Could be. If it's a soft delete gem, who, is, who could get to that information or is it just the, the operator? I, I think the soft versus hard delete might matter for the downstream consumers. So if, if like in my example, if the middle ring deleted the D service, how does the downstream, how does the, how does the upstream server, no, the downstream service understand that uh, D no longer exists because it doesn't exist on the payload anymore, but there's no notion like it's gone. If you, if you make soft delete a thing in the protocol, then um, you also have to figure out how to go and resume things and, and you really have to then um, include collision warnings because you can't create something that doesn't list, but there's some, there's some deleted record in the back that might cause a, uh, cause a um, uh, conflict anyways. So that's a slippery slope. It, it is. I mean, I'm just, um, uh, and again, maybe, maybe I'm misinterpreting, but if I'm a client that's using um, one of these services and suddenly it just disappears under my feet. I mean, you, where's the life cycle management of this service is about to go away. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you, you know, you should stop using it before it just vaporizes from any directory services that, that are advertising it. And I've got a business process that relies on that. Do we have a status field? We do not. That um, I, yeah, I've seen some other specs do something like a, um, I don't want to say expiry, that's not the right word. Some sort of flag that indicates it's deprecated or something like that, right? Yeah, we have a, we have in our services, we have a status field, which kind of says, you know, creating, deleting, uh, and then the various states of liveness. And that might make sense to go and introduce that here. That you have, that you have a status, which is the thing doesn't really, the thing is not deployed right now, or it's not reachable but um, it nevertheless exists. Yeah, I mean, and, and I guess from my standpoint, it's the other angle where, you know, if something is deprecated, you shouldn't maybe advertise it, um, but that doesn't stop me from continuing to use it, yeah, until, mm -hmm. um, you know, until its replacement has, has arrived, yeah. But, yeah, but so, then I think the status would do that job, wouldn't it? it it would if if that's the um, if that's the proposed mechanism. I, I wasn't aware that that data went down to that sort of level. We have to, if you deprecate something, I'd also expect to know when it's going to be retired altogether. Yeah. You know, so otherwise, how can I how can I plan my work? Yeah. You know? It's something we face internally. Yeah. You know, at PayPal, with people wanting to create new stuff all the time and change versions. Um, and having an understanding of something, the fact that something is deprecated, therefore I shouldn't use it. Um, I shouldn't build new stuff on top of it, but it will continue to operate for a certain period of time. Um, so it's more that, you know, getting that information across. And if the delete is simply, I, I'm trashing this record, um, that, that's, I think, a, a slightly different function. You're right. Jim, would it make sense for you to open up an issue so we can have this discussion? Because I think it's related, but it might be uh, require more thought process. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. Cool. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Scott, your hands up. Yeah. What do, what do you think about adding a, uh, a labels uh, top level field where you can, it's just a string string map 
where you could put metadata around uh, stuff and then potentially uh, convention says that something gets labeled as deprecated true. You want to open an issue to bring that up? Because I think it's, it's related to gems, but I think it, it's in, a label thing in general sounds broader than even what Jim was looking for. So I think both of those things might need separate discussions. Okay. Cool. But it sounds interesting because I do like the idea of people, people able to add extra metadata in a well-defined location. Sanjay, you're, did you want to say something? You didn't raise your hand, but you came off mute. Uh, I agree with uh, Jim. I, I wrote that up in PayPal's API guide and I was, I was just going to post a link for that. I think uh, it's on the public guidelines. I'll write it, uh, write the link here for the deprecation. Okay, cool. Thanks, Jim. Okay. So the, based upon that conversation though, the one thing that popped in my mind was whether we should add a sentence in this in the get section that says, should the receiver of this output assume that an entry that just, that went missing has now been deleted. It seems like they have to, don't they? Could you repeat that statement? So if, if as a client, if I do a get to a discovery endpoint and I get back a list and then five eleven minutes later, I do another get and get back the full list, but now there's less items in there. Should I assume that the items that are now missing have, have been deleted? I would assume so. Yeah, I would assume so too. I, I was thinking we need to explicitly say that though, so people don't know, interpret it differently. I'm not sure how else they can interpret it, but interpret, I don't want them to interpret it differently. Well, in that case, the epoch revs. So it should be that the, everything under that record is the current state of truth. Say that one more time. You lost me. How, how, how would how would epoch play into there? Because the the entry is gone. The epoch wouldn't even exist, right? Well, the, the oh I, the the total service list. I see. I yeah. Okay. I I think we need to figure out how to do that because like in the aggregation case that becomes very complicated because if if right if D disappears, I don't know how to delete it because it could have come from some other downstream. And I'm doing a merge of things I know not i don't i don't necessarily know which service told me about the that aggregated service list right. sorry hold on my my screen just did some really weird stuff so i'm not sure what you guys are seeing from sharing perspective there we go so <laughs> oh, should i should i open up a separate issue because it sounds like this this might require some more thought process beyond just trying to introduce some the some management apis I think it's a good step moving to the management APIs, separating from discovery, and I think we can continue to work it out in the repo. I wouldn't block merging this from. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oops, good golly. Okay. Uh, Eric, your hands up. Yeah, uh, this this might be way too out of left field. Um, but a thought that was coming up for me while I was listening to all this good discussion is that uh, there's, there's kind of this uh, discussion of this materialization as a, the source of truth for these uh, described services. And um, it seems to me that uh, it, it's maybe a little ironic that uh, we're not instead offering a kind of stream of events or a log of events that can be just consumed that says, hey, the the last, all of, here's the entire history of uh, what what I know about this service. And the last uh, entry on that service is it, it was uh, requested to be deleted. Um, I don't know if that's terribly helpful, but um, it's, it might be potentially a different way we could approach this rather than uh, worrying a lot about how we specifically materialize the state of or of our knowledge of the service we could instead just keep a history kind of here's our latest you go for that latest there's nothing there you go for the history and you get this a the last entry in that history is this was requested to be deleted i think that's a very reasonable reasonable thought 
Um, and actually, before before most people joined, um, I mentioned um, that certainly for the um, for the service registry um, spec, I'm planning to have state change events that um, that do what you just proposed, and that is um, like whenever the the state changes. Um, that you can then um, learn about that state change as a subscriber and um, um, then basically keep track of it. And then for um, attaching as a fresh subscriber, it's fathomable that, um, you know, given that your delivery path uh, supports it, you could basically subscribe to from the start and uh, if you subscribe to the start, then the existing state of the service registry is basically uh, played to you as insert, as insert statements. I don't think you have to keep the entire uh, event history of, you know, all the sense and, and all the creates and deletes and everything. But um, uh, you should, it should possibly be possible for a subscriber to get the state of the registry being read to them as a sequence of, um, of um, you know, insert statements, if you will. So, uh, so that's something that I certainly have thought about for the the um, uh, for the service registry, and it might also be for discovery that discovery synchronization on in the on on the, uh, in flight happens through uh, raising of events, but there will always be the case that um, uh, delivery um, is difficult and that you have to go and effectively do this from a client that sits behind. A firewall, etc., where um, uh, you need to have some imperative way of 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 manipulating the store kind of from the outside with the cr in the crud way. So I think what we're doing here is not is is useful, um, but I think having an event driven way to also do synchronization would also be great. So uh, I second that. So is it does it also mean that we are adding the requirements for consistency uh, for implementation? because the events uh, have to be uh, presented in a consistent manner, right? From any, you were showing the demo and it was uh, kind of eventual consistent uh, kind of scenario. So anytime you try to access the latest event, maybe you know, you know, with whichever server you are hitting, it may not have the latest uh, event. But, but DNS is like that, right? Mm. One way you could do this is you keep the, the top level get services and then you introduce the services slash epoch or something and you ask what's the what's the changes what's the change log since this last epoch that I knew? Yeah. And you, you could get that sub list, which is a really interesting idea. That's that's basically what that is. It's like I, here's the last change that I know about, and uh, um, and then you basically just say I would like to have a sequence of events since that time. So that's actually interesting. So hold on a minute. That would put a new requirement. Hold on. Do do do. Because I like that idea, but we would need to make it so that the epoch doesn't just go up for that one service entry, it goes up across the board. So between two service entries, you could see which one was updated latest, right? Because otherwise, Scott, you couldn't, you couldn't have a global epoch for your get. That's right, you would, that would only work for the single entry, but we could try to, I mean, what if the discovery services list had an epoch in the header or something like a, I, I don't know, maybe Eric has an idea of how other services would do this. Yeah, so, so tell you what, Eric, could you write that up in an issue? Because obviously there's interest from the group in that, and that sounds really interesting. But I, yeah, I guess my, my question time, is, yeah. is, is, your, is your idea there, is it to replace something that's in here, or do you think it augments it? Oh, goodness. It, this is the, the big um, the can of worms that I'm opening, I guess. Um, I, I don't think that there's anything inconsistent about using a uh, log of events to create the uh, materialization that we've been talking about uh, interacting with via this uh, REST API. Um, 
I, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, it, so it doesn't have to be inconsistent. Okay. Thing I should say. Because um, it wasn't regarding consistency. If we have a well-ordered log, then uh, at least semantically equivalent code will be can could produce uh, consistent results off of it. Yeah, this because the one thing that wasn't clear to me when you described it was whether you were suggesting that we offer up a log or a stream of event type of thing in addition to what we see here or not, or whether you're suggesting, you know what, we only have the logs and 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 then there really wouldn't be a way to say, just give me the latest snapshot, which is what I think the, the REST APIs as I proposed here offers up. So I wasn't sure whether you were suggesting an alternative or a mixture of the two. The way that feels compact to say that is fairly indelicate. Um, <laughs> Uh, a lot of a lot of the engineers that I've worked with would struggle to really work with a kind of a log driven um, uh, conception of the history of a service. That's that's more in depth. There's more to know to do that. Um, but uh, a materialization is easy for them, and uh, and it comes up with consistency problems and other issues like that. So um, I would think that. Uh, kind of the log would form the core of it and some specialized code would know how to materialize that. And then uh, those that are more interested in just the latest snapshot or don't want to do any of the extra work, which for great business reasons or whatever, can just access that materialization. But th that's that's an implementation detail, right? Because because you, yeah, can, I suppose. It, because you can just go and create those the event stream from the projection if you want to. So if you just want to go and store all this in a relations database, it's it's actually fairly easy to go and create the 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 events you need from a query. Right, but I think I I, I, I think I agree that there's a lot of implementation detail in terms of the relationship between these two worlds. But I think what I'm hearing from Eric is it would be nice if the spec offered up both views or both worlds, whatever you want to call it. And, and I agree that because we need to have we need to have a way to communicate um, the the event view um, over the wire as cloud events, of course. And so um, that's that we need to go and express that. Of course, <laughs> like that. Of, of course, there is no other way because we're just inventing the thing, so we should go and use the thing. Hey, Scott, your hands up. <laughs> I think I have enough time uh, for. Next week, I would like to demo exactly what Clemens just uh, asked about, where each of that the services in the demo produce cloud events when their catalog changes. So that was like phase four of my uh, prototyping that I've been doing. I just didn't have time to get to it. But maybe I can get to it this week and show it off next week. Sounds good to me. OK, so to try to wrap this up, I think uh, Jem was going to open up an issue around deletes. I think, Eric, you were going to open up an issue around the, the, the logging interface thingy. Sound good so far? Okay, and so back to the PR itself. Um, as I said, I don't want to merge it today. I think people need time to read through it. But from a high level conceptual point of view, does the direction seem okay so far? Okay, not hearing any complaints. So please just review review th review it then for wordsmithing or whatever, um, and we'll see if we can get this thing in next week. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, okay. So let me between these two. I know they're both relatively new, but uh, Jem, do you have an update on the protobuf stuff that you want to talk about today, or should we punt until next week? I wasn't sure if there's status of that. Um, actually, I, I think we're pretty much done. Um, so uh, that that's a late breaking um, update. There was some um, concern uh, from one of the reviewers around some of the language in our overall spec to do with timestamps um, because he had concerns around you know if if a publisher sends a timestamp in in one you know, stringified format, for instance, and it, and it arrives at the other end, maybe without, you know, it gets changed from an offset basis to a UTC Zulu time basis. Uh, you know, was there an expectation that local offsets had been, um, you know, retained 
across transports or formats. And having had a quick um, chat with with uh, Clemens yesterday, that that doesn't seem to be the that's not the expectation. So it's really a question of whether I want to tweak the spec a little bit just to make that more explicit. Um, other than that. I think we're basically done. I will, I will ask for one more, you know, round of votes from from all the different people that have chimed in on that PR. But, uh, one of the longest running PRs, I think. Little <laughs> did I know. Yeah. Okay. Any questions or comments for Jim? Otherwise, we'll leave it to people to review it offline. All right. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Jim, and, can, and thank you for all the hard work you put into that. I know it's in a, a big one. Do you okay. still want XML after this? <laughs> sure. You can write, write up a, a soap interface too, please. <laughs> well, I'll add that to my list. <laughs> well, yeah, we have to do the soap. Is it the binding or is it the mapping? I don't quite well, know. No, the one after this was going to be gRPC, actually. And I think that's a, uh, is that a transport binding? That is or, a transport is binding. If, You're doing Protobuf, Protobuf is, I think they go hand in hand. It's like gRPC is the transport and then Protobuf is your encoding right. for it. Okay, so that was, that's gonna be my next um, six month PR, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, thank you. In that case, the last one on the list is Slinky. I think this was opened up just today. Would you like to talk to this one? Yeah, so I tried to, to draft a um, um, WebSocket protocol binding specification. Um, I, I've tried to, to take inspiration from the existing implementations we have, uh, in particular the SDK JavaScript, uh, as a very well made sample of sending JavaScript, uh, sending uh, WebSockets over JavaScript. And what I did is that I just put these in the words. So the, the two big things um, of this spec is that uh, you send events just inside the WebSocket message. So one WebSocket message is one cloud event, which is serialized with an event format. And in order to agree on the event format, we use the sub protocols feature of WebSockets. So maybe, maybe open the, the readme uh, where I have a, an example. This us. one? Uh, no, 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 uh, in, uh, no, the re uh, files changed. Oh, sorry, files changed. Yeah, uh, down, down, where is the, uh, the example? Below, below. Okay, this one. So this is the example handshake. This is a, a normal handshake of WebSocket. So the client does a get request and add the upgrade uh, WebSocket. And there is, uh, the server replies with, uh, with connection upgrade. So the only thing that we add here is that WebSocket allows you to say, um, allows the client to specify what protocols it can understand. So in this case, I coded our event formats to, to, somewhere, to, to the WebSocket sub protocols. And the server, when it replies, says, okay, I've chosen this sub protocol, which in this case is JSON cloud events. That means that during all the stream, the events will be sent always as JSON. So using the JSON event format. And that's all the spec basically. Then it's just words and formalities. Cool. Any questions for Slinky? <laughs> Clemens, you came off mute. <laughs> uh, um, I'm not sure whether I like this, uh, whether I like the, 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 the content type being put into the, or the format being put into the protocol there. Talk about here? Yeah. Well, the alternative to that is that, so, so we have two alternatives, basically. This is one of the alternative. The other alternative is that we define um, we basically encode this uh, information in the path. So like you do slash events plus JSON 
to get events as JSON. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but to be honest, I prefer this one because you have the choice. So for example, in this case, if the server doesn't support uh, JSON, I'm just mm -hmm. saying, it, it could reply with Avro because uh, the client gave the choice, use JSON or use Avro. Okay, I'll, I'll think about this. I can hear the, the wheels grinding. Okay. No, no, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're grinding. Um, I, something, something, something rubs me the wrong way about this, but I can't articulate what rubs, rubs me the wrong way about this. So I have to stare at this, at this. I might also be in the end be okay with it. So I'm not sure yet where that, but it, it's, it putting putting the putting what effectively is the content type of the 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 cloud events, kind of baking that into the protocol identifier. That's kind of what is like it jumps in my eye and says. So so I'll I'll consider it and then I'll um, I'll give comments on it. I, I don't think it's necessarily wrong. It's just that. I think I think you should look at it from. From another point of view, so in this context, uh, we are talking about a full duplex stream, where yeah. in both in, bo in in both ways you send cloud events, right? Yeah. So the protocol here is how do you send the cloud event, and this how it's the how you serialize the cloud event to send it to me. So, and if you think about that, that that then this is kind of the protocol. The, the sub protocol, which is the name that Absorbent gives. It. I think I think what's what's um, I think what I, what is um, what's poking me is that if we introduce message pack or Cbor, if when, then um, we'll have to go and update that spec. Well, uh, well, 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 wait, wait. So I think it's fine to just use the, um, the other content types. So we could, I think we could use application slash cloud events plus JSON. I think we can do that. Uh, the reason why I use this notation, so JSON.cloudEvents, mm -hmm. is just to follow the guidelines of the spec. But I mean, we can bend those guidelines and use the, our content types, so we don't have to update this yeah. stack anymore. I think there is some that there is a bit more to negotiation in in, in the web sockets um, in web socket. So so um, I think we understand each other. Um, so my, my, my I think my concern boils down to. I would like for the bindings for these binding specs to be stable while we add more encodings, if possible, right? With JSON being the weird exception because that's the universal stuff that everybody is doing. But um, otherwise, I, I, I would like for us to be able to add Cbor and not touch any of the uh, any of the the specs to be, you know, for special en enums, etc. Well, then we can just say application slash cloud events plus Cibor, and that's fine too, I think. Yeah, so, okay. Well, I, mean, your I mean, your choice, that's something that uh, debatable. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's in the end, we're all gonna agree on it. Um, but I just, that was my reaction to it. It's like, this is a little, I'm always thinking about the, the extensibility angle and stability of the specs angle when we um, are making this composable. So that's the, so that's my, I think that's ultimately my concern. Let's. Let's think about let's think about how we can go and make this a little bit more flexible. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? Does it seem like a, the right general direction to go? Aside from this question. Okay. Not hearing anything. So please, when you get a chance, review this one. All right. Oh, I, I have oh, something yeah. to add. Yeah, yep, please go ahead. Is that, uh, so uh, maybe we need some input here. I don't know. So the, there is this corner case, which is not 
are very specified by, by the WebSocket spec. So um, in case the server doesn't support any of the protocols the client asks for. So for example, let's say that server doesn't support nor uh, JSON nor Avro, uh, the response should not contain the protocol header but it's not really specified what should happen there. So what I wrote in the spec is that the client uh, should close the connection. So, mm, the, the client, the server? The, cli the client should close the connection because it receives an upgrade uh, without the protocol, so it should close the connection. It, ah, gotcha. I, th I think refusing, is refusing the upgrade not specified? Sorry, I think it. I think I think there's. A, I think that's 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 actually defined to refuse the upgrade. It's not defined what happens when uh, when the protocol is not uh, when you don't support any of the sub protocols. Th then you just don't you just don't accept the socket. You know, which means which means you can. You, it's your choice whether that's your whether you choose to be that your your fault or the client's fault. Um, but then I think the right answer is to to give back a four hundred. Or not supported. Well, but that's uh, yeah. What I'm trying to say is that th this exact point is not defined by the spec. It just tells you, hey, you should reply without any protocol header, and then it's that there's nothing else. So yeah, if you can just look at this particular. Um... Yeah. But since you're an HTTP, closing the connection is none of your is none of your business at that abstraction level, la layer, right? You simply refuse. You simply refuse to to honor the upgrade request, and that's it. But the client is then completely at liberty to reuse the connection for to do something else. Yeah, well, I f I f what I mean with close the connection in this context is close the web socket connection, maybe. Yeah, but you're not, you haven't established one yet. But you, you're doing you're you're at, you're you're doing a polite a polite uh, request. Yeah, that's true. Asking for an upgrade. And that upgrade gets refused by the server, giving you a 405 or, or 400. And then the connection just sits there, waits for the next thing that you want to go and try. But there's no need or um, there's no need to close the connection because you, you might then go back to go and, 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 and try something else. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that will reuse, you have no, effectively in, in, in most HTTP stacks, you don't even have control over the socket at the bottom. So I know what you mean. I'm just saying that formally what you're writing here is wrong. Okay. Okay. That, that's what I wanted to say. That's, 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 that's like, yes, you should walk away. That's basically what you're saying, but closing the connection is formally incorrect. Yeah. 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 Let me, let me fix it. All right. Cool. Anything else you want to mention, Slinky? I'm lawyering, lawyering these things. We're here for. <laughs> Slinky, anything else you want to point out for people to pay attention to? No, no, just look at the PR. Okay, cool. All right, any last questions for him before we move on? All right, thank you. I think that's the end of the list. So are there any other topics people wanted to bring up? All right, in that case, before we switch over to the SDK part of the call, let me just do um, uh, attendance. Uh, you, Quinn? I'm Apologize if I'm butchering the name. You, Quinn, are you there? Oh, I think they may have just dropped. Lance, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay. And I, John, I think it, John dropped off. I don't know which John it was, though, unfortunately. Might have been Mitchell. Uh, Matthias, are you there? Yes. All right. And Daniel? Here. And Paris? Paris? I'm here. Um... Excellent. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Did I miss anybody for the roll call? Okay. And <clears throat> actually, hold on. Do we have anything on the agenda for today? We have nothing as of right now. Does anybody have any topic that they'd like to talk about? Otherwise, we could just end both calls right here, right now. I do, okay. I nothing. Yeah, cool. I don't, I don't think anybody's going to complain to get any more time back. Yeah. Okay. Not hearing anything, I'll make a note in here that we canceled the call. But other than that, hey, thank you, everybody. Yep. Right, one, okay, one, Scott. 
Do we have a timeline on when we're trying to make a cut of the discovery registry and subscription APIs? Uh, I don't think we've decided on one yet. Should we talk about a timeline next call? That would be a good idea. When is our, well, the release events or those things are, do they mean anything anymore? I don't know. Um, yeah, we should talk about that next week. Okay, sounds good. Yep. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I like the idea of putting a target date in there. I, get, I like I like forcing functions, so that'd be good. Thank you, Scott, for mentioning that. Good. We used we used to have events and in person gatherings for those things, but now time means nothing. <laughs> yeah, we should release this. I think let's let's target like March, uh, one fifty. <laughs> Oh man. Aren't we already past that? Aren't we in like March 200? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> oh my God. We're going to a rattle here. All, All right. right. Anything else? Otherwise we're going to, we're going to end this call and not have the SDK call. Any objection? Fabulous. All right. And I guess we are done. Thank you everybody. We'll talk again next week. Bye. Have Bye. a good one. Bye. 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 Bye, y'all. Au revoir.